Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Promise Neverland Season 2, Episode 11, the finale. So, uh, real fast order of business. I had some audio issues that I was dealing with. For some reason, my video suddenly got quiet, or, or a little more quieter, and it was causing my little voice activation thing that I had going uh, not pick up my voice all the time. So, I don't know if it ever happened in a Promise Neverland episode, but sometimes you'd see my lips be moving and there'd be no audio for whatever the hell I was saying. Uh, so I turn that off, but that does mean that if I sit here and not talk, uh, you're gonna always hear the humming in the background if my, uh, water heater is on, like, right now, because I just got out of a nice warm shower. So, like, if you listen, you can hear that humming. Uh, it'll probably stop in, like, ten minutes or so, but... Yeah, just in case you guys are like, why does he suddenly have this feedback noise, or make sure it's not your headsets or whatever, but anyways, guys, on to the finale of Promise Neverland. Um, as I've said many times, I have not read the manga. I know a tiny bit about what's in the manga and how much they skipped in the anime, so I've just been trying to enjoy the anime the best I can um, knowing how much of a train wreck it is, kind of, you know, so that's why if you're watching this and you see me in these past few episodes and this one be like, eh, it wasn't terrible, it's because I don't know what I'm missing, essentially, like, there are things like last episode, or maybe the last couple I felt are really rushed, I feel like we could have fleshed out, like, the Demon City attack a lot more, and just this whole escape that they, or I guess rescue of Phil and all them, and then escape, I feel like it could have, like, been a little more interesting and a little more engaging rather than being something that we blew through in an episode, you know? But, anyway, um, I'm still looking forward to the finale and seeing what we get with it, you know? Like, I, I still have my hopes up that maybe we get a glimpse of the human world and stuff like that, uh, before this ends, but the way Promise Neverland has disappointed me... So far, I have a feeling that we're not going to see it. Anyways, guys, let's just jump into the episode and see what they do give us, though. Alright, we're going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Uh. I'm usually one that tries to stay as unbiased as possible, so, I mean, that's why I said, like, the Demon City attack, I was actually pretty into that, just because of the emotions that it elicited from me, um, seeing those children be, even demon children, be corrupted and deformed and stuff like that was, was tough to watch. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it, but I did like it. <laughs> I also kind of wish we got to spend a little bit more time with Isabella. So we could have known things like... Back when she was contracted, like, taken out of prison to hunt the kids. What was she promised? And, like, um... Why was she okay with giving that up in order to save the kids here, you know? <clears throat> Rather than just, like, throwing Isabella in as a turncoat, just as a, you know, shock factor for us. Alrighty. Let's see what they got for us. Yeah, Emma. Trying to turn this guy. <laughs> Hypocrites. Uh. 
All right. Whoa. The Earth. Hmm. He looks a lot like Norman. Oh, damn. Interesting. Yeah. God, he's like sitting in an office with a bunch of kids behind him in jars, too. Or at least that was symbolism, if anything. You're just a psychopath. Yeah, he started helping the... Yeah. I can see why some people would believe that, but... Oh my god. So he had his brother killed. You don't deserve to cry when you put a hit out on your own brother. I have no sympathy for this fuck. I don't care how much you believe that what you're doing is right. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Is he referencing, like, war and stuff like that in comparison to this? Oh, well. Jesus. There's no blood on that knife. Yeah, he's dead. That's way too much blood. Alright, well... <laughs> Bye, Peter Rattray. I don't really feel bad for you. Alright. The villagers cheering... In victory. Oh, this is one of the higher ups, isn't it? Oh shit, what's this? Is this like Demon City? Oh shit, what the hell? So, like, royalty.
<laughs> well. Hmm. Oh wow, so they're just gonna stay behind, huh? <laughs> Get over it already. All right, all these forgiving kids being able to call her mom again and stuff after everything she's done. In some kind of perverted way, I guess. All right. Alright. So they're going to continue on their rebellion, I suppose. <laughs> Such big hands. Is it just going to work now? Why did it suddenly work now, but not before? Interesting how the arrow just went from, like, the dark side of Earth to the light side of Earth. Okay. I think the artist forgot to do hands there for a second. <laughs> There's just, like, no detail with, like, fingers or anything, I don't think, in that shot. It's like, if you're gonna zoom in on a shot, at least try to make it look good. <laughs> I'm not usually one to notice or really care about that stuff, but I just happen to notice it. Oh, jeez, it's a creepy-ass gate. Is it an actual, like... Oh, wow, okay, just the pen... I didn't get to see it, or I didn't pay attention enough to look at it from the other side. Does it actually, like, lead into a tunnel, or... I've always wondered if it's, like, a portal or some shit. It's just, like, a whole bunch of demons that eat you. Turns out there is a human world. They're just right back at Gracefield. Uh oh. What? Is she are they staying behind? What? What?
All right, well. Kids you left behind at the hideout. I, I did hear about other characters that just aren't in the anime at all um, at his hideout that we never got to see, really. Um... I guess that's who he's referring to. All right, well, I guess they're Mujika's just like, uh, by the way, you know, when, uh, when you guys get this all sorted, Sanju just wants to hunt and eat you guys, so we might want to deal with that problem, too. I figured they were staying when we saw that ship before, when they were standing behind them <laughs> and not going through the door. Oh. All right. Yeah, all these kids definitely need a adult figure. <laughs> I mean, I guess they have a shit ton of moms now. Okay, so he's going. It looked like he's going to work on cures and stuff for the seizures and shit, I'm guessing. <sighs> Aww. Phil, the best boy. Alright. <laughs> oh. That straight up looked like the Full Metal Alchemist door, by the way. The truth. For a second there. With that lower shot of it. Especially with all, like, the bright light around it, too. Okay. Ocean. Hey, it's the music again. Alright, the human world is just 
the city. Looks like it's just like our world, essentially. Alright, random ass people. Their normal clothes, that's cool. Oh, is Isabella the one playing it? That's cool. Hmm. I do wonder how many... Yeah, so it's just our world. School buses. Essentially. I wonder how many people living in this world, though, know about it. Oh, Phil and Dawn. I don't know what that shot is. Is that one of the moms, like, actually having a relationship and a kid? Is that what that's supposed to be? Alright, we get these guys on this side. Some people we don't know. I'm guessing those are the, the people he left behind at the hideout that he talked about. Probably the people from the arcs that got cut. What the hell? What in the world? Is that guy levitating or is he sitting on that dragon? And it looks like he's like levitating a ball. What the hell was that? Looks like some monk dude. Hmm. A demon city. Mujica being praised, I suppose. As like a savior or something. An airplane. Okay, we're back on the side. Oh, they're older, aren't they? I think? <gasps> Is that Phil? Yep. Oh, they came back over here. He's so much older! Alright, well, not a terrible, I mean, for what it was, there are some things I might have changed if I was the one writing it, but I mean, you know, I can't say I absolutely hate the ending, it wasn't bad. It's just not my favorite ending to an anime, you know? And I mean, we don't always get endings, but it's just, it's, it's such a bitter pill to swallow when you know that, like, I feel like this anime could, like, and I know the manga I've heard isn't the best, like, past season one anyway. Like, I've heard there's, like, one or two more good arcs and stuff like that, but I still heard it's, like, still pretty good, you know? And I don't know. It's, it's too bad knowing that it could have been a lot better and we could have got a lot more seasons, but for whatever reason, they felt the need to bring Promise Neverland back and finish it this in one season. Um, so whatever, like, budget constraints, like, if they didn't think that they were able to handle the, the rest of the content or, or whatever, whatever the reason was, but... Um, I'm happy with being able to, like, see the human world at least and know that it's, like, a, uh, it's an actual place, you know, but anyways, guys, that's the end of episode 11, the finale, so, yeah, um, like I was saying, I'm glad to have seen the human world because for all we know, they could have been, like, set back when, the, like, because of this whole, like, the demons existing in general could have set back technology and for all we know, it could have been, like, the, uh, like, the freaking 1800s over there, you know, and 
and they're all living shitty and stuff like that. Granted, I guess that wouldn't make much sense because of the way they lived here in, uh, um, what's it called? In the farms, you know? I, 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 so I figured it was gonna be, like, a cityscape kind of thing, or at least I kind of hoped it was, and, and it did end up being that. There was one thing I wanted to go look at, which was kind of interesting, was when they got to the door... Um, okay, so the door is, like, mounted in a tree. Okay. It felt a little weird how the door connected to the human world, like, underneath this place so suddenly, you know? Which I guess when they... Oh, wait, never mind. Wait, hold on. That wasn't the right door. That was the door leading to the actual door. I just thought it was, like, a, a non-detailed shot. Interesting. I guess they never really show us the other side of it, huh? Hmm. I guess, like... Is that just supposed to be le like? Am I overthinking it, or is that just supposed to be left up to our own, uh, like, our own thoughts, right? Because if we look at that door, it's like sitting in the middle of a little island, right? It never shows us the other side. So, in like the angle they show it, they don't give us like. A real good shot of it like the best shot is when they first open that door and they see it there it looks like it has like water going all the way around it and it almost feels like when you're opening the door it's not actually opening like if you walked around it it's like there's like space behind it there's not actually like a pathway I could be wrong maybe it's just the angle we're seeing and we're not actually seeing the pathway but even when they opened the door and they walked in, it looked like it went out a lot, like, bigger on the inside, you know? So, like, is there some kind of, like, magic at play with, like, how the door works? I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wish it was, like, etched into, like, a mountain line or at least it was just, like, a long tunnel that they had to walk or something, like, better than that because I don't... I don't like how they wrapped up a lot of things, but they make it, like, just from this one shot, they make it look like the the portal is just, like, or the door is like a portal, you know? I, I'm not a big fan of that, so... Uh, I mean, I'm probably looking into it too much, but if we had, like, a side shot of it, and, like, really, like, there is, like, really a pathway that just goes straight back from from this view we have of this, like, water that's going around it and stuff then that would, that would make sense, but I'm pretty sure some of these shots we have of them, like, inside the door, in looking, because we look at them, I guess it's just so white. Eh, okay, maybe they are just the width of the door, and, like, going back. It's just so white you can't see, like, the walls and stuff. I don't know. It's, uh, it was just something that bugged me when I saw it the first time, and I just thought I saw it wrong, but looking back, we still don't really have much answers, but anyway. I mean, overall, the way this ended with, with Norman Ray and Emma staying, it makes sense that they need, like, someone to lead these people, um, to change, you know? And where the demons are intelligent in their own way, I don't know how smart they are in compared to Norman Ray and Emma, you know? And they probably want to make sure that what happens here doesn't also just, like, revert back, you know? Like, they don't want, they don't want, like, to leave and then find out later that, you know, Vilk and all the villagers and stuff were massacred... Because they weren't able to, you know, they weren't able to fight on their own. So they stayed to make sure that they could change this world, you know, and and come up with a new way that, you know, either everyone can live together or just cure everyone with the blood, keep the separation, and just make life better for the the demons too, you know. But, but yeah. 
we found out a little bit in the beginning with Ratchery. Uh, I don't know if we knew that he killed his own brother, um, Minerva, but... Like, I don't know if we were supposed to feel, like, pity for him and be like, I don't know, maybe if I was in his situation, I would have done the same thing. You know, he's trying to he's trying to protect the promise that was made a thousand years ago to protect humanity, you know? Um, and I can see where some people would think that's, like, that's the way to go, you know? Like, you know, take your personal feelings out of this and, and just sacrifice all these extra kids that, you know, don't really have families anyway, just to keep the peace, rather than finding a different way, you know, um, I, like, I both, like, am okay with seeing that bit of Ratchery, but in the final episode, I kind of wish we got to see other things instead, like, maybe more, like, maybe more, like, wrap-up animation, because, like, the whole, like, last five minutes was just, like, except for, like, you know, minus a few parts, was just, like, still images being shown to us of, like, what happened. Maybe, like, a little more animation of what happened and, like, less of Ratchery, you know? Um, especially because, like, they did all, like, they tried to, it's like they tried to develop his character a little bit this episode and make you, like, almost feel for him and both then make him die, you know? And I felt like neither one worked out too well for me because it felt like all we did was try to convince him, which makes sense, that's something Emma would do, is try to save everyone, regardless of whether they're, you know, good or bad, um, and then, when it, like, and then we sit there, and him, like, almost seem like he's gonna change, but then not change at all, you know, and it just kind of felt like a little bit of a waste with spending all that time with him for it to amount to nothing but him killing himself, you know, and a character that I didn't really care about to begin with anyway, because we've only seen him on scene, like, you know, a handful of times, um, and each time he was just a dick the whole time, so I, I didn't really care about him, um, but, but yeah, and I, like, would have liked more time as a farewell to, to these characters and stuff like that, since, yeah, I don't know, anyway, um, but one interesting thing that we did have with the conversation with Ratchery was him talking about one of the big secrets is that the kid? I think he, what he was saying was the kids in the farms are the descendants of the, um, of like the people that were against the promise. Did I did I hear that right? He was saying like the, like we used our enemies for the farms, which means they doomed like the lineage of all of those people who fought against to be, you know, bred and eaten for, you know, all of eternity, obviously until Emma came along, but, um, but yeah, if I understood that right, that's, that's interesting, and I wonder if there is any kind of relation, granted, they said the, um, I kind of want to go back and read it again, right? Um, where was it? He was, it was before the sacrificing brother, it was, um, right about here. All right, our clan executed a promise that betrayed our comrades. Okay, no, I guess I did read that wrong. The children are descendants of our friends who fought alongside our founder. Oh, jeez. Okay. Not the rogues who were against peace and wanted to continue the war. Okay, so I read that wrong. My bad. Okay, so damn. So, like... Essentially... The, the Ratchery bloodline, as well as whoever else, it looks like it was, like, this little council in a circle here by a fire, um, made this decision to use all the comrades that fought with them, you know, for peace and everything, as the descendants that they, that they use for the farms and everything, 
I wonder if any of them could have been, like, siblings of the the Ratchery or whatever, just because I felt like Minerva looks so much like Norman, but it's also anime, and, like, sometimes you get, like, a white-haired character and you just think they look a lot like white, another white-haired character, you know? Um, so maybe it was just, like, a choice. I also thought that, like, one of the babies that came in had, like, the white hair, too, that looked a little bit like Norman as well, so... And that was back in, like, season one when I thought, like, maybe there was, like, cloning going on or, or something, you know? And that was gonna be, like, eventually they'd grow up and realize that that kid looks exactly like Norman and, like, discover something else out, you know? Um, but that uh, that theory obviously wasn't, wasn't right, so I don't know. Um... But yeah, interesting. So it wasn't the it wasn't the enemies. It was the comrades, all the people you you fought with and stuff. You were you were just like, all right, well, we made this deal now, so you guys and all your children are just gonna be fed to these guys for all of eternity. We're just gonna keep breeding you, and uh, and yeah. So that's that's messed up, but interesting. Kind of makes sense. I mean, someone was gonna have to be the descendants, right? Unless they like somehow artificially created people, but it makes sense. But yeah, damn. Alright, well. Um, overall, Season 2 had some interesting aspects, you know, like in the very beginning I was really interested in the outside world and everything at the start of Season 2 and, and wondering what this, like, world was outside. It turned out to have, like, a lot more, like, creatures and monsters and things that we don't have, I still don't know how the world got that way, you know, like, how did, how did they perfectly split all the crazy shit that is in the demon side with the stuff that's on the human side, right, like, is that just a thousand years of, like, different evolution, is that what it's, like, supposed to be, you know, that's something that we never really got an answer for, and that might not even be in the manga, that's just something I'm curious on, is, like, if we assume the Earth was all the same, and it was just demons versus humans having this war, and then they they suddenly, like, say, split the world perfectly in half, and, you know, split the humans on one side, the demons on one side, um, it seemed like the human world was just our world, and I imagine with our, like, animals, with, like, bears, deer, moose, stuff like that, whereas on this half, it's, like, friggin' 50-eyed demon monster things that run on, like, six legs, and these fish that grow on trees, or not grow, but, like, bounce around on trees, you know, and, and, like, all that other, like, crazy shit that we saw, um, like, how, how did that come about? That's, like, one of the things that I'm, that, like, really made me interested in the, the beginning, but, and then we met Sanju and Mujiga, and I thought that was really cool, how we met some demons that weren't all just pure evil, and we got to see a little bit from, from their perspective and, and, and how this world is and, and learn a bit and stuff, which was cool. And then we found the bunker, which was kind of neat. I wish they spent more time there. They also never covered whatever that, like, help me room was. They never even really, like, talked about it. They showed us some glimpses, but they never really even, like... Because I don't think Emma and them were there. I think it was some other kids that were there, and they never even, like, talked to Emma about it on screen, and I would have liked, like, something regarding that, even if they only spent, like, a couple minutes, like, saying what they thought it was, you know, because they just, once again, leave that to your own interpretations, but once again, that just might be, like, the, the anime cutting out manga stuff, you know, um, but... And then, like, obviously we had the phone call with Minerva, but it ended up being, like, a recording, and he was already dead and stuff like that, but... Yeah, I wish I wish we got to see them surviving in that bunker a little more, maybe have, like, some kind of, like, mystery or something fun in that in that bunker, you know, rather than the, the jump cut we had to them just instantly being invaded and, and stuff like that and, and having to run again. I wish we got more with Isabella. I said that in the beginning um, and stuff like that. I wish we had more of her story. If, if she was going to be, like, a big part, like, betraying here in the end, I wish we knew, like, what the demons offered her and and stuff like that. Or, like, you know, I don't know. But, but yeah, there were some things I liked. Like, the Demon City attack, I liked the... Like I said, I, I mentioned it during the beginning as well. I liked the... 
the emotions it elicited from me. Um, I like the whole, like, like, uh, evil blood or whatever they called Muchika. I like how her blood was, like, I don't know, I don't know how it originated. Like, all they've really talked about was the, the birth. Like, she, she's had it since birth, so, like, is it just, like, a random coincidence that a child was born, or was she, like, was experimented on in the womb or something by someone who wanted to, like, create this blood, you know? Like, they never went into it, but, um, I am just a little curious about that, but I, I do like the idea of that, of this, like, chosen one who has his blood that's able to save everyone, and it was kind of like the linchpin to Emma's plan, because that way no one has to eat humans anymore, they just have to get over the fact that they taste good, you know? It's, I mean... It's kind of like if, if us humans found out that the reason why we're dying from old age or something, or the reason why Alzheimer's or cancer is a thing is because of, like, pizza, you know? And it was, like, it was like 100% proof that if you didn't eat pizza, you wouldn't die from old age or Alzheimer's or whatever. I'm sure there'd be a lot of people that would still want to eat pizza, but you just don't. There's, like, other things to eat in the world. I mean... Yeah, I, I mean, unless they literally, like, needed it to survive, which was how it was, because they degenerated, right? But they made it sound like they only ate humans to stop the degeneration and maintain their intelligence, whereas with the blood they're able to do that, which means, like, Sanju and Mujika, who haven't been eating humans, are fine, you know, so that means there are other things that they can eat, you know, so, I don't know. Um, it's interesting, but... But yeah, I guess that's essentially what Emma and, and all of them tried to do, was, was change that world, convert everyone to, to having this blood, and and be able to not have to eat. Now, I wonder, like, once you have that blood, if, like, I don't know how demons reproduce, but assuming they do it like humans, if, if two demons got together that had the blood, and they had a child, would that child be born with the blood and not have to eat humans or does Muchika have to stay around and any time a baby is born they just have to like keep using her blood to to like manufacture or to like convert all these people like all these babies and everything i imagine like it's passed down you know if if i was gonna like come up with a story idea because that would just mean the piece would fall apart as soon as Mujika died if she was, like, the only one. Unless they managed to, like, re reverse engineer whatever it is about her blood and, like, synthesize it as a, like, vaccine kind of thing, you know? But, anyways, just some random thoughts I had from throughout the season. Like, like I said, there are parts that I enjoyed from the season. There are parts that I disliked. Overall, I definitely... My personal opinion, I know there's a lot of people, especially people who have read the manga, that are going to probably disagree with my thought on this. I felt like the anime was okay. Um, I felt like I've seen way worse anime, you know? Like, I think I mentioned it in one of the previous episodes where some of the slice of life uh, animes I've seen are just, like, really, like, shallow and dumb concepts, you know? And... Usually I only watched them because I was trying to, uh, I was trying, and that's obviously, once again, I, I want to stress that it's my opinion, because I'm sure there's people that like that in the world, like, like the, some of those slice of life stuff, but I'm more of a person that either likes, like, really wholesome stuff, like, there's there's been some slice of life ones, which I can't quite remember the name of it now, but... One of, like, the first ones that comes to mind is just this, like, single dad, um, or, yeah, single dad with a kid, and they, they go to this place to, like, cook food all the time, and it's just, like, a really wholesome slice of life, and I loved it, you know, um, and there were some parts that made me, like, really emotional and, and stuff like that, and that, that, that that's the kind of stuff that I do like, but most of the time, like, the easiest way to get me is with just some, like, action, you know, or, or mystery, you know, and stuff like that, so... Things like this usually go higher up on my bar than, like, you know, some of the some of the lower slice of life. So basically what I'm saying is I don't think this is the worst anime ever. I just think that they should have, you know, either... 
I, I feel like season one had such a good story and such a good ending that I would have, I think I would have rather, honestly, not have this season than have a butchered season like we got, you know? I would have rathered if they just ended it there and said, like, you know, we don't have the... Like, as, as a studio here, we're not capable of giving you a good enough uh, adaptation to to continue. So Promise Neverland is, is cancelled and that's where it's going to end, you know? And maybe another studio could have picked it up some other day or something, but... Because I have heard that it was, like, the studio was, like, too small or too busy or something to be able to handle, like, a bunch of seasons for this. But, I don't know, that might have been speculation, too. That's nothing factual. Um, I don't, I've never really looked much into it. But, anyways, um, yeah, I think I would have just rathered it. It ended on season one and never got a season two. But, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, guys, so that's the end of Promise Neverland. Uh, unless something ever happens where they say, like, hey, we're gonna, you know, retcon this whole thing, and we're gonna make Promise Neverland Brotherhood, or we're gonna make a movie to fill in some of this, like, we're gonna make, like, two or three movies to fill in some of the stuff that happens in between. Um, but as of right now, this is gonna be the end of Promise Neverland, and I won't be watching it anymore. Maybe someday I'll, f like, do manga stuff. It, it, I've been talking about it with a friend. It's nothing that's going to happen anytime soon. But I've thought about, like, how I do it on the channel and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah. Uh, and I don't even know if I ever did manga stuff. There's, like, a whole bunch of other manga I'd rather read over Promise Neverland anyway. But I am kind of curious on how this show... Uh, like, differs from the manga and how I'd feel about the manga at the end, you know, in comparison to this feeling. And I wonder how that would, like, be with me have watching the anime first and then reading the manga, how I'd feel about it, you know. But who knows if I'm even going to do that, like, in my own time or anything. So, probably not. I'm not a big, I'm not a big reader, so, uh, and I'm pretty busy as it is. But anyways, guys... Yeah, that's it for Promise Neverland. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my reactions, even though uh, they might have been a little boring at times and maybe a little biased to the fact that, you know, I know all the drama that's going on and, and maybe I didn't have the best reactions to some of the stuff just because I'm a little disappointed with other things. But hopefully you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Hit that subscribe button if you did. Uh, check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. You can get access to my Patreon-exclusive shows where I'm watching Jujutsu Kaisen at the moment, and Black Sails. Uh, and maybe some more stuff to come on there somewhat soon. Some more fun stuff. Little stuff, but, but possibly fun stuff coming, coming to there. But yeah, check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.